Testing, testing. Can you hear me? No. Testing, testing. of a lot of guys that I played with 40 years ago that are doing the same stupid things they do did 40 years ago now, but they're just out there for the sunshine and the beer. <laughs> but I like to try to get better. Oh, how could you drink beer in the sunshine? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know. Do you want this copy that you really find? Yeah. I'm trying to get rid of paper that I had this 
these were already approved, so I don't need to make a motion to approve them, these transfers, these couple of transfers. Well, yeah. well, you don't have to make a motion if you guys are all okay with them. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll write that into the minutes, but. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but so this is, this is to be clear though, this is a different set of transfers, so from yeah, last time. We discussed this, it's not on the minutes, I thought we discussed this one and the other one, the $3,000 for IT support. Yes, it was here. On the 13th right and then um the ambulance 2039 yeah well that's yeah that's today's agenda i'm just making sure you know this is a new mm -hmm. this isn't something we brought up at the last meeting yeah, yeah. Okay. why is kathy hudson still on here <laughs> the appointing committee has to get rid of her <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's the way the bylaws are set up so mm -hmm. Yeah. They don't know that, or they're not. No, it's just that it, you know the appointing committee only really convenes when there's oh. a new person to appoint to this committee, oh, okay. and so you know there just hasn't been any reason to convene. Got so um, we do have somebody who's potentially interested. So oh, good. see, yeah. Good, good. So then she'll go <laughs> convene. <laughs> Kathy was here very few meetings. I think it was. Not for, uh, we just COVID. needed a body, you know, we <laughs> needed a body, you know, that was the, yeah. you know, yeah. did you say she's coming back? No, 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 oh, no, I asked her if she's still on here. Right. Okay, so we did. I saw it in two places on the transfer, right? Yeah, so there's, uh, talk about it, yeah, yeah take a look. All right. I thought we talked about it, but okay. There were a bunch of them we did talk about. We had talked about the ambulance, but I don't think there was a number. Yeah, so. Well, uh, no, that's a different ambulance. That's the big piece that they asked the selectmen for that we didn't agree on. No, so let me, let's okay, back up here. I'll, I'll, I'll talk through the transfers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the Hilltown Community Ambulance one. Um, so essentially, and I think I may have mentioned this at our last meeting, they had some wrangling with the state and eventually it came down that even though they're nonprofit, they are still subject to this non-public ambulance trust fund assessment that the state has implemented. Um, and that assessment is based on, you know, certain number of calls to Medicaid patients, et cetera. Um, the formula is a little bit complex. Suffice to say, it, it changes year to year. So this year, uh, this is actually for FY22, in fact, so the previous fiscal year, um, they gave us, they they've been able to give us the first two quarters. We won't get the bill for the next two quarters until next year. So we're gonna deal with that in the next fiscal year. Um, but it's a, a little over $2,000 this year. Um, and so moving forward, uh, looks like we're gonna have to budget for that um, because, and we, and we don't exactly know what it's gonna be. Um, you know, they'll, it's, it's a formula again, based on, on calls. Um, so obviously, so since we've already expended our entire budget for Hilltown Community Ambulance because the last of the uh, quarterly payments already occurred, um, we're requesting this reserve fund transfer. So that's that one. And then the other one is just for IT. Um, so our, line, our IT line item is always tight. <laughs> um, this year, uh, Windows is basically requiring a bunch of security upgrades. Um, and so there were a few things that we didn't anticipate that we have to, our Novus Insight, our IT company had to you know, uh, get for us mid-year. Um, so this reserve fund transfer is basically just to get us through to past the end of the month. So, you know, they're not banging down our door for in invoices. And then we'll be able to do year-end transfers starting May 1st and okay. get that tied up. That sounds fair. Now you signed here, and yep. I signed that. Yep. You have that one. Okay, great. Yeah, and these have to be submitted in triplicates, so I think I need. Now, you are signing. <laughs> I have to make three copies one? of this. But. Oh, okay. oh, you can have you, you can have mine back. I don't think. No, you're signing this one because you're the office. Ah, uh, yes, I should sign that one. Yeah. That one I signed. Now I can give you back. But no, go ahead and sign me so he doesn't have to make any copies. Oh, I'd oh, okay. really like to get rid of some paper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
because he needs three copies. I'm really yeah, exactly. Thanks, Rip. Yeah, uh, yeah, I printed out three, so for each. Oh, <laughs> that well, was supposed to be personal. I just thought you'd have to sign this one too. Got to get through. the accountant's office is open so somebody's took that position no no it's just um lynn kane our new assistant treasurer collector occasionally has to go in there and get stuff so so that's why it's open is she here today she is yeah oh, I guess she needs it. yeah yeah you should stop by yeah yeah i think she's uh she's about to enter her golf season hours so she <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well she just she'll I'm having like a 30 day long. <laughs> i like her already yeah, so she'll be, she'll be, I think she's leaving at four today, but oh, if you stop right. in, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we should be done well before then, I'm hoping, so. Uh, Have they actually started putting the greenhouses at Bell Floor yet this spring? They have one greenhouse in. Um, I, I will say they are still, there's some issues with um, that they need to address with our planning board and our conservation commission. Um, there's uh, basically, there's a number of trees surrounding. Yeah, you know, that, that, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, um, and the planning board, there's some other issues that they need to address based on what their special permits said they could do. Um, so, so we'll see, they're, uh, you know, they're moving forward in fits and starts at this point. All right, so these are all good. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. Do we want to jump back into this budget? Or we could even take a look at the, uh, if we want to start, we could take a look at the um, Collins Center recommendations there. Um, so I mentioned in my email, uh, I think late last week, that I was hoping to get from Sarah um, a report on. The number of hours for some of the, the folks whose hours vary. So that's our custodian, transfer station agents, um, and a couple other people. Haven't gotten that yet, um, but I can plug that in once we once we have that um, and budget accordingly. Um, and then the other thing I would note on there is there are certain positions that um, there was no market average that the Collins Center got just because those positions you know might not exist in other towns or exist in so few that they didn't feel comfortable putting an average in there um, but so for the most part you know you'll see on the left current appropriation for that position and then you know the the low mid-range and high range of their recommendations and then on the far right there is um, their the, the market average that the Collins Center looked at I was surprised some of the towns they used for comparison. What did they use? Well, there's a whole list of them. Yeah. But but some of them um, are much larger than that. Well, like they got Waitley on it. Right. Waitley's yeah. got tons right. of businesses in town. We mm -hmm. have um, they got Monterey. They have Sheffield, oh. which are yeah, the rich towns. <laughs> well, they're right in the corner of Mass where the New York people yeah, have their yeah. summer right. houses. Right, no, I know. It's not, so I their demographics are significantly different than ours. But some of them, like they use uh, Montgomery, New Marlborough, Otis, a lot of them were similar here. Washington. Well, they got the summer people, but yeah. yeah. West Stockbridge is out in the Berkshires where the yeah, right. I refuse to keep that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I know we when we first discussed the findings from this, people pointed that out, like a lot of these communities are pretty different from ours, but yeah. it's it's difficult to find, you know, well, apples to apples. Boston, for sure. West. Yeah. 
they look very similar. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and the other thing is, I think, you know, a lot of communities that we might think of more as our peers, um, probably a lot harder to get this kind of data from, to be frank, <laughs> you know, so. So, um, but I think, you know, the other thing to point out is um, this is based on 2021 wages and salaries. Um, and now we're, you know, we're in 2023. Um, so there's been a little bit of time for, for us to kind of catch up maybe um, in that, <laughs> you know, even if what they were recommending back in 2021 seemed high, now it might seem, okay, actually that's a little bit more in line with what people's expectations are given the yeah. you know, given inflation, et cetera. Um, so, so yeah, so I outlined uh, kind of the, the range on there um, and then the budget document, the updated kind of recommendations from myself that I sent over um, for the most part moved people to kind of the middle of that range. Um, I think there are a few important exceptions and I want to touch on those. Um, the, to me, the most, um, well, let me see here. I'm going to pull it up actually. Now, is your intent to move the low people up? And what about people that are making more? Yeah, so that's some, that's a that's a question we have to ask, right? Yeah. Um, there's, I didn't see too many who were already above the range. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think our, initially our assistant treasurer collector before Lynn got here was was above the range. For example, um, she's since moved to the water department, and it's a, a different situation now. Um, but yeah, for the most part, what I was looking at is okay. If you're below the range, can we put you within the range? Um, and then if you're already close to the top of the range, you know, do like a two and a quarter or something like that. Um, so that, you know, there is some compensation for changes in cost of living, but you know, you're already within the range. So yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> some of these people like the library director, she already asked for a raise mm -hmm. and for a little bit of increased hours. So I mean. Her current appropriation is 29.5, and the mid range is 41,000. I mean, that's and that's not, that, that's way more than what she even asked for. So, right, and so that was know, that was one of the positions. Yeah, but that's the question of catch up, not catch up, but catch up. <laughs> No, it's like so. yeah, so so my recommendation um with her would be to put her at the low end of the range um, and with her increased hours to twenty eight hours a week. Um, now, you know, again, we could we could change that up in terms of hours. I think it's I want to try to get people within that range because, you know, we went and did a whole study <laughs> and we and, and I don't want to throw everything out the window but, but, but it's true it's true it's not yeah. saying it's just something absolutely it's another it's another it's another tool for us to use when we're determining this kind of thing that doesn't mean we have to change anything right yeah 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 you know it just is a is a tool to look at and say this is what other people are doing and this is what our library is and right and do we think that that needs to change? It's not, we did the report, now we have to change everything, or that's random, it was free. So I mean, that's <laughs> how I would look at it. And, and like I said before, to me, we're trying to get the most that we can from the least and, and not the cheap librarian, but I mean, she, she kind of knew the deal when she came and knew what the pay was. Right. I always see it from the like retention perspective because I know how much time we spend just trying to hire people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I but I absolutely see your perspective there. So let's let's talk about the library because there's um, there's the director's budget, um, and then of course there's the tax, and then also the archivist to some extent. Though now he's going to be going down to I think four hours, so he's pretty much yeah. It's, very little at this point. Um, so for the techs, what I was recommending um, was because they're not actually, I think, 
um, within the the range that was recommended by the Collins Center. Um, I was looking at bringing them to 24 hours, which I think Nicole had suggested 36 hours. Um, but anyway, this is a point of discussion. We can decide whether or not we'd rather, you know, increase their pay and and you know keep their hours the same. Um, I certainly want to, to some extent, defer to Nicole and that she knows the day-to-day -day operations of the library. Um, but, you know, we also want to make sure that that line item, I tried to keep it relatively close to what it was last year overall. Um, so I want to make sure it's not exploding or, or the opposite. <laughs> so we did 15 now. Yeah, so, um, yeah, let, let me just the board, I'm confused by that. Because minimum, um, maximum, and mid is all the same. Yeah, because that. So with that, um, because the college center probably didn't have a recommendation. They didn't have a recommendation for that one. Yeah. yeah. And they say that in the report that there were some places that just didn't have. Yeah. Right. Okay. But yeah. Their major recommendation with the text is having two people there at all times, because mm -hmm. that was something that I spearheaded because I said. With the fact that they had no rear exit and the fact that there's security issues there, you need two people there all the time. Because most of the time we had one person, that was it. So they, that's why it looks um, a little weird, 20 hours, but that's 20 hours for two people. Yeah. Right. So they're person. just two texts? Is that what you're saying? No, there's, there's multiple texts, but that you're saying right, that they're right. they, two they, at a time. Yeah. Them actual yeah. because it's just not secure well what did she ask for for pay for that? so she she asked for um let me just pull this up give me a second i want to say it was 1534 but let me just confirm that because yeah what i was recommending is we we go with her requested amount, mm -hmm. given that there isn't an, any kind of recommendation from the Collins Center on it, but then we don't necessarily go all the way up to 36 hours. That seemed like it was quite a jump in hours. It was 20 to 36. Per person. Uh, just for yeah. the, the pool of tax. Yeah, so there are 36 so hours. Only of, open, what, yep. 24 hours? Yeah. yeah. Not much. Well, I know they're required to be open at least. 24 hours, but I think it's up to 26 right. or 28. Yeah, so her, let's see, yeah, her her uh, request was 1534. Which is just the 2.25 percent we're giving everybody for last year's the exact same amount that we used yeah. for everybody. And I think in general, we asked for that again this year. Right. We came by this. So, I, you know, and then what I would just point out, so, you know, my recommendation, again, is bring the library director up to 28 hours a week and bring her up to the low end of that range. Bring the techs up to the requested amount from the library, so 1534 an hour, but only 24 hours a week, not the full 36. Um, and that would mean that, you know, the overall library salaries line item changes from um, a little bit more, you know, like uh, roughly $58,000 to $60,000. So it's, to me, it's a reasonable increase to the overall salary line item. Mm -hmm. So you're cutting the tax to pay her more. Well, actually, they they are cutting their archivist. So they, you know, they their archivist is going down to four hours. So um, oh, okay. he was at, um, let me see what his his number is. Yeah, so he was at, 1613. Um, Nicole requested that he go to 1650, but of course his hours are going from 16 hours a week down to four hours. So that to me is where there's there's kind of a lot of savings. Right, but when he starts doing something else and she wants another archivist, she might say it's uh, we need it for 16 hours. Well, yeah, we might have to have that conversation. It's true. Yeah. And, and once you give people raises, you can't take it back. So what does she get per hour now? Yeah, her uh, current per hour is, well, so her, her she has 26 hours a week at 2138 per hour. 
And what do you want to give her per hour? Uh, so it's a minimum, yeah, 26. So the 2138 is her requested or is that what she got last year? 2138 is what she got last year. You want to go to 26. What did she request this year? She only requested 2186. And again, this is, you know, part of 21% pay rate. Yeah, so again, this is part of my approach of let's try and do what we can with the Collins Center recommendations. Obviously, they're just recommendations, so we can we can change that. Um, but I would like to try and maintain some consistency across the board. And I remember when she was here and she requested it, she said their circulation was way up. So it's Now, the other piece with their budget to remember is that their state aid is somewhat contingent on something called the municipal appropriation uh, requirement. So over three years, they need to show an average of two and a half percent increase. Um, so that kind of <laughs> we always have to be aware of that, even when if we think like we'd like to cut something, you know, if they end up losing their state aid, that would be not a good situation. So. Just something to be aware of. I'm fine bringing her to that salary minimum. Absolutely. As I said before, that's an embarrassment for her. Burger King makes fifteen dollars. Kevin's smiling, so <laughs> he's got a different I'm perspective. Just <laughs> I'm just laughing because she had a job at Gateway in public education in a union under a contract with all these benefits and she gave it up by choice to come here. Wow. So we can give her a raise, but just understand that she chose that at that pay raise. So don't feel bad for her because she- No, I don't feel decision. bad for yeah. her at all. Yeah. No, I just yeah. think she's she's doing a great job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's actually what you're saying yeah. makes me more in favor of giving her more. Because <laughs> yeah, lots of people don't leave those kind of positions. Well, like again, it was her choice to absolutely take a, yep. Yep. effectively a part time job mm -hmm. at, at lower pay. We can give her a raise. I don't. Jen? Well, I, I, as far as the libraries go, I think that. At those hours per week, as far as the director goes, mm -hmm. the only thing is I don't see what she requested. It's not on here, right? Yeah, so she requested in terms of her pay rate, uh, 2186, um, and, and also proposed going to 28 hours a week. Um, now, again, if we think that she doesn't need those extra two hours a week, that's something we could look at and say, hey, I think we're, we're good at 26 hours. No, I'm fine um, with it, but what do my team members think? I mean, it's one of those theories I have is if you have to file a report for a dollar versus a thousand dollars, it's the same report. Well, I realize that we're a small town, but now with circulation being uh, CW Mars circulation for the whole Western part of the state, it increases that one function has to be done for a lot more. So mm -hmm. I suggest that we give her the 28 hours, because that must be how long the library is open. So she would be there, I mean, theoretically, for 28 hours at $26 an hour. And that comes out to, or no, 26, that's, that's what she's getting now. No, 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 that's, um, that's the minimum right. recommendation from the Collins okay. Center. She's making closer to 2138 right now. Mathematically, that's what it comes out to? 28 times 28? Her, her, so her her annual amount, if if we went with the 28 hours okay. at the Collins Center mm -hmm. minimum amount, mm -hmm. um, would be how, how many hours does she want? 26. But she wants 28. Correct. Yeah, yeah. and I don't have a problem with that. Um, 
So it's 728 a week. That'd be 37. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would either say do it for a little less money per hour or cut the hours a little bit. I mean, from 29 to 37,000 when she's not even asking for it. Yeah, yeah. Is, I hear you. You know, 27.5% right, well, raise. Well, we find out with the calling center to try and get in line with everybody else. Mm -hmm. Just I mean, that's what we're talking about. She's badly underpaid, and I know you have a little <laughs> thing with Gateway. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, yeah. She did, but that she didn't come here and go, "Oh this, crap, this though. is what it pays." She chose to take the job, right? And I think the library of trustees are overseeing this whole process, this budget process, and I don't think they they'd allow her to go to thirty-seven. They would say it was too much. I say that because isn't that the minimum suggested? Thirty-seven. Yes, no, with the extra two hours for twenty-six dollars right. times twenty-eight hours times fifty-two weeks is thirty-seven and change. Right. That's, yeah. that's Which a big is a jump. Eight thousand dollars. But then it has to do also with the hour change. Right. So no, okay, no. I don't figure out what is what has to do with the hour change. What happened? <laughs> So, yeah, so if you did 20, so, so if you did 24 dollars times 28 hours times 52, you're at 34,944. Mm -hmm. That would to me would be right. still a lot, but it's a reasonable. Plus, um, as far as calculations go, I think you should stay with the number of hours and use the hourly rate as the variable that you play with. You know what I'm saying? In other words, you say you could reduce her hours, but I think that in order to- Oh, I was, I was just saying we could keep her hours level at 26 and, you know, and I'm, I'm just- Presenting options yeah. for what you could do to, right. you know, and reduce right. the now, amount of increase. Those options, you yeah. keep the time, keep the twenty-eight hours, okay. and play with the hourly rate. Yeah. So if you did twenty-four, so twenty-four times how many hours? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Yep. The new requested hours is six seventy-two a week times fifty-two is thirty-four nine forty-four. One second. Right. And they're getting rid of the archivist. And how about the text? Are the texts? So again, the texts are, aren't exactly addressed in that Collins Center report. If we if we wanted, I'll say so like the bottom of all wages that they recommend is 16 an hour. You know, under her request, it was only 1534 an hour. If we want to instead bring them up to 16. And you know, you know, not increase um, Nicole's salary to the point where she's within that range. That's another option. Right. Well, but again, I think that no matter what we do, we have to clear this with the trustees. Do they have the final say? Well, yeah, they do. Board, kinda. Of, board of selectmen. Right. Say. Yeah. Yeah. Board of selectmen. Well, right. trustees. Well. As far as the library goes, the library is a little bit like the water department, but yeah. not quite. Yeah, I don't, I, but I don't know if they're going to, if we were to say, hey, we're, we're, you know, giving her a raise by $8,000, I'm not sure they would have a problem with that. They say make it I mean, you're talking. Well, I mean, this, if we do this at $24 with 28, that gives her a $5,000 raise. Right. Which That's is still a lot. It is a lot. But she does a lot. And no, she does. I would rather give her a raise than the text. Well, I thought maybe spread it out a little bit. But... Yeah. And all I'm saying is see what the chairman 
of the Board of Trustees has sure. gone home from lockdown. Huh? Give her everything you can. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we, I, I really don't think we should be thinking of this one. We have to make a stand and then stuck with it. They decide to work. Right. We they make the a recommendation and they can fight it out. Yeah. So. And she's are fine with, you know, all the so, stuff. So I'll artists. just point out so if we if we do that, um, I'm not saying, you know. If we do what? If we go with the 24 mm -hmm. hours, or excuse me, $24 an hour, 28 hours a week, um, overall with the tax at that 15.34 an hour, 24 hours a week, um, then we would be decreasing that salary line item by $1,000. Mm -hmm. So, which again, which it, it's the, it, whole the whole library, library salary line. The archivist hours. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Okay, the whole, the total. Which again, you know, that might be fine, but I always have to point out that over a three year span, if we don't meet that two and a half percent increase for that budget, right. then they lose their state aid. So that's yeah, right. Yeah, let that right. Well, what he's saying is you gotta know that next year you're going up again. Yeah. Well, that's the one. Yeah. Should be one. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have a problem with increasing her to twenty four. She works hard and she's got a, she wants the extra hours and I'm sure she'll use them for constructive reasons. But the tax, I wouldn't increase. I mean, I'd do what she had asked for. The, the requested amount. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. But I wouldn't go above Can that. Can we make a motion to change what we have recommended? For, for well, me? it's, I'm just presenting my recommendations and, and you as a committee are talking them through. And then at the end of this, we'll, you know, present the budget that you want to take to the select board. Okay. Um, but so I, I don't think you need to make a motion on each individual line. <laughs> but you're making notes on all. I am making notes on all. Of that. I've got a spreadsheet that is FinCom recommendations and it's being updated. So. Yeah. I mean that seems fair to me. I mean it's still it's a big raise, but. Again, they're catching up because it wasn't anywhere near that for years. I mean, it, it's been a long time since I worked there, but I remember going to the trustees at the hearing and saying, you got to pay people. You can't not give them a raise because they won't even get one and a half percent. And and then so the other part of their budget, of course, is they have to, they have to budget 20% for materials. So let me just do that calculation really quick because based on the change in salary, that'll change too. So let's see. Right. Yeah, so that's gonna, yeah, I was gonna bring them down a little bit. Um, I have a formula issue here, so I'll have to get back to you on that one. Um, but yeah, so currently it, um, they have about 17,000 budgeted for materials because that's 20% of their current appropriation. Um, and this will, yeah, this will, <laughs> this will bring them down below that. Um, well, it'll decrease yeah. it because the total will go down. 20, yeah, so yeah. it'll decrease it by 20%, whatever we decrease. Right. Yeah. Which is a thousand. So it decreases it by $200. Right. Um, and yeah. basically, the, the decrease is coming from the archivist. It, right. That is right. not going to be there anymore. Right. For the most part, you'll, you'll right. have four hours a week. So, it, okay. well, she can do the archiving now. She right, right, right. 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 Because they both. Been trained in yeah. All right. So, are so, we all agreed yeah. on that? Yeah. Okay. Wait, wait what's the yeah. final? <laughs> well, we're going to go to that 20, one. Twenty-four dollars an 24? hour for her at twenty-eight hours. Right. Okay. Yep. And then do the recommended that she had asked for for the tax, and we're getting rid of the archivist. That will bring the total budget down by fifty-seven about. Yeah, so for her total, it'll bring it actually bring it all down. 
Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, because um, give me one sec. Right. It'll it'll go down by uh, like a thousand dollars. So yeah, that's yeah. fine. So we're just reallocating the money, basically. Right. Yep. Okay. What compartment you want to go to next? Yeah. Um, so let's, well, maybe we'll just get the tough ones out of the way first. Uh, so highway superintendent. Um, so currently Dave gets 65. Um, he's nowhere close to that Collins Center range. But what I will say about that range is it's pretty far out of whack with the market average. Mm -hmm. So the market average, Dave's pretty close. The market average is about 67,000. So my recommendation there would be to, to bring him up to 67. So $2,000 raise. So what would be last year was 60? Uh, he was, I'd have to check. Yeah, he might've been, he might've been at 60. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't here for his initial contract. So <laughs> let me take a look. Yeah, probably well, we'll cover the appropriation is at 65. Oh, well, so his, the salary, the highway salaries line item is, you know, it's literally all of, it's all of them together. It's five people in there. So it's right. Um, on that sheet, so yeah. You can't tell. Yeah. So I let me, thought that we had moved them to 65 for this year, for next year. Let me take a look at his contract. So this current appropriation is what we talked about for next year. Yeah, give me one second. I'm just trying to pull up his. Uh, that's what I thought. But we, yeah. No, I think that's what they're getting right now. I thought he went from 60 to 65. When? <laughs> really? Well, I thought that, that he was at 60 and he had asked, and we're going to put him at 65. No, no, so he's he's already at 65. Okay. He's at 65. And what did we yeah. say we're going to give him next year when he was when we talked about him in here before we came out? I can't remember if we landed if we actually landed on number. Yeah, what do you want to put them to? So I was going to suggest sixty-seven because that is in line with the market average. Yeah. Let me look at what it. Three percent. Yeah, so that's that's better than a two and a quarter, but it's you know again it's in line with where the market's at. So that highway salaries includes him, the 267. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, so that'll go up. May go up slightly, yes. And luckily, they don't have materials in the 20 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we don't have to worry about that. And, and the so, other salaries are all negotiated, so we don't have to worry about oh, that. Right. Really, right. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's just his. Right. And if he, in fact, was at 65 this, this year, I mean, I don't have a problem with giving him two thousand dollar raise. Not a big deal because we cut some other things out of his budget. Right. Um, we cut the tree work and some other items that we lowered. Right. Well, out of his requested, he had. He had right. Come That's in what with, I mean. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. 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 So okay, I'll make a note, Dave. It's sixty-seven. Is that right with you, Phil? Yeah. I need to kind of. What's your What's your objection? <laughs> you want to go? Um, huh? All year long, Jeff has been getting all winter long. Jeff has been getting calls over and over and over of the work that his department is not doing, and he doesn't follow up on it. Or even South Street. I mean, yeah, yeah, we should do that, but he doesn't do it. I will go with the minimum because it's minimum. But I just have to say, I don't really think he's working for his full potential. It was that we're paying him already. Order is that the, what you're supposed to do? That, well, that's what we've been working on, and yeah, I'm okay with yeah. this, you know going up to 67. When I saw these minimum maximums, I was like, oh, absolutely not. Yeah. And, <laughs> so so you know, 67 would be okay. 67. I mean, even his employees don't stand behind him, only because also the previous superintendent made a lot more. Well, and I do wonder if this range that the Collins Center came up with had to do with the fact that Rainey was much better well, compensated. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? 
what did he do? 79. Yeah, here we go. For a two year commitment? What are we crazy? <laughs> I mean, that was yeah. a different situation. It was kind of a yeah. forcing function. I think, you know, with Dave, we, with Dave, we, I'm trying to get better at giving him the support he needs in terms of seeking out grant funding and, and doing all that kind of stuff. I think he, he has a challenge in that he's still relatively new and I, I'm new too, I sympathize mm -hmm. with that. And he's got a bunch of young guys who need some pretty strong direction and he's They're still- And it is still. He's, yeah, he's still finding his feet in some ways. Um, so so I that's why I'm not suggesting like, yeah, let's give Dave yeah, a huge raise here. So yeah. Seven is okay, yeah. 74. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 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 Just a little bit to get a little incentive. Everybody's getting 225, he's coming up there. Silly question. Um, there's no more highway salary. I'm a highway secretary. No, no. She, I when I was working there, there was right, and she did a lot of grant work. I mean, a lot. Yeah. Even to the point of going to the place where the grant money was and picking up the check and putting it in the bank. Yeah, we did have town administrator. We didn't have Josh until well, three yeah. years ago, four years ago. Right. So back then, you're right. You're right. But, yeah. I, you know. So I know, like Angie came in like what 2017, and I think you guys off and on had a town administrator pre prior to that. Um, but it's true. I mean, there's just there's kind of no end to the amount of grants you could be seeking for that department because there's so much to be done. Yeah. Um, but again, I'm I'm working with Dave on it. It's just yeah. Yeah. The other, the other right. part of this, of course, is like Chester just tried to hire a highway superintendent and it took them like six months. <laughs> so something to be aware of. The, there's not a lot of people who want that job. Yeah. Right. It's not, you know, you think it's easy because it's a small town, but don't we have the largest mileage? Well, yeah, you, if, you ask, um, if you ask John Hoppy, who is our custodian and is also highway super in Russell, he'll tell you, I took the job in Russell because they have 22 miles of roads, of town owned <laughs> roads, you know? <laughs> so, so it's manageable. Up here, we have over 60. So it's, it's a lot. That lives on some state highway. You're right, that's right. Um, all right, 23. So, 65 <laughs> and 67, so we're done with the highway superintendent. Good. All right. And then, so the other ones, uh, let's see, going back to the top of my spreadsheet here. So treasurer collector, that area. Um, so for the last few years, the treasurer's salary line item has been uh, blank because we've essentially, we've been paying Sarah that out of the professional services line item in that same overall appropriation. Now that Sarah is going to be, you know, not the treasurer collector anymore, theoretically in FY24, um, I was looking at putting the treasurer's salary at the middle of that uh, Collins Center recommended range. So 24 hours a week um, at, let's see, what would it end Did up being? you just being? hire someone for that? Yeah, so, well, so we just hired the assistant treasurer collector and she will be promoted to treasurer collector. So we don't need this because whatever you hired her for is this number. Mm, I, sorry, I need Well, you what? have a treasurer salary. Yeah. And that's okay. not Sarah because she's a consultant. Right. So, so the person that you just hired and however much you're paying her is what you just negotiated with her for this amount. For assistant treasurer collector. But if she's moving to a treasurer collector position and Sarah's out of the picture, then she's got additional responsibilities, et cetera. And so I'm so the assistant treasurer you just hired is getting paid 36, 828. That that's the appropriation for it. That's, um, the, that's the assistant treasurer tax collector. That's the worst one. Hmm? That's, yeah. Well, that's that's the reality is we're talking about public salaries here. Yeah, that's, you know, you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so the so again, so the overall appropriation for uh, assistant treasurer tax collector 
because at the beginning of the year we had a different person in that position mm -hmm. is is higher than actually what we're talking about, than what we're currently paying her right because it because we negotiated a different on this part sheet the treasurer's salary is it's just Colin's data we don't right. have it broken out as the treasurer and the tax court one position so the assistant treasurer tax collector is really more what we're working on in other words you know what i'm saying in other words yeah you went about the treasurer right right right, right. so the point is that Sarah was getting as assistant treasurer tax collector like one hundred thousand. No, not assistant. She was the she's the treasurer collector. Right, right. right. But the assistant she, showing up to the treasurer collector. Right. Right. So she's assuming that those responsibilities directly. There's no training. There's no. She's well, going right into Sarah's shoes. Well, yes and no, right? So the the plan would be for. July 1 for her to become treasurer collector. We will, we are working on putting together an RFP for some level of support services. And that would probably mean um, if we end up switching to a new municipal finance software package, um, you know, we'd have somebody to help train with that, uh, training on Harper's payroll. Um, and then, you know, we're still trying to figure out, you know, what other kind of support she might need for the first few months of the new fiscal year to make sure that she's, you know, totally solid. Right. Um, so there might still be a little bit of, of money in that professional services line item that we're paying a consultant and it would probably end up being Sarah to provide that support for those okay. first few months. Okay, there's and that's going to happen this fiscal year? That's, that's the, coming, the, the, so on, on the start of FY24. So she's going to go yeah. from assistant to. That's the plan. Yep. She's going to be an assistant for three months. Well, she's she, we hired her, yeah, at the beginning of March. So, yeah, she'll have been assistant for four months or so at that point. Yep. And that's why that's why we're also talking about having some so, kind of support still in place. So, so when yeah. she moves to treasurer, there won't be an assistant. Correct. We'll have to hire for that. So. So there will be. Well, so so this is a this is a conversation, right? Like we have to figure out once once she's in there. What level of support does she need internally? Um, right, because your numbers yeah. here are very different. You got assistant treasurer at thirty six eight, and then over here you're you're looking at eighteen thousand. Right, because again, Karen, when she had that assistant treasurer collector position, was well above what the Collins Center was recommending recommending for that position. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that happened, but that's just how yeah. it was. Mm -hmm. So, and, and what is? Is assistant treasurer collector what she makes? Currently, she's she's at twenty four dollars an hour, twenty four hours a week. Twenty four times twenty four times fifty two is twenty nine nine five two. Twenty nine thousand nine fifty two. So she's. See, the way I see it is the assistant treasurer tax collector mm -hmm. is more or less Sarah. Because it's going to be the treasurer collector, right? You're saying the assistant treasurer collector is going to become the treasurer collector yes. next year. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, and then she'll need support, you're right. saying. But that's not, I don't think the, I don't think the support she needs, it, I mean, she needs support under her yep. for her responsibilities, but then she needs support otherwise of some a go-to person like Sarah, who's experienced, you know what I'm saying? Well, that's, but, that, that's, that's not a salary position, right, too. that's right. a consultant thing in the budget. Right. It's separate. Right, that's right, not, right. Yeah. But you still got to consider that, right? Well, yeah, so, so. Overall, that you know what I had proposed last time. Currently, that overall appropriation for the entire treasurer collector office is going from two hundred five thousand down to about one hundred and sixty, and that's mostly because we'll no longer be paying Sarah's fee. Now, we of course have to budget accordingly in terms of health insurance, et cetera, for you know. But that's something else. Think, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just, but I'm just trying to give you. Kind of context there. So, so. Um, my question is, 
is she's still going to get two line, two treasurer clerk, treasurer clerks. So that that's another question is what level of support because you know we have two treasurer clerks right now. Right. I'm not sure we really need to, need to especially yeah. if we do end up hiring an assistant treasurer collector for you know in the range of um, you know twenty four thousand dollars a year or something. Right. So the going from two hundred five to one sixty does yeah. that include two clerks or no? Yeah. So that that includes two clerks currently. Right. So I'm budgeting for the scenario in which we have the most staffed up office. Right, right, right. Um, and it's still, again, it's still a significant drop from last year just because of, um, you know, not having to pay Sarah all those consultant fees. So, so July 1st, she'll become the treasurer. And, That's Sarah, yep. and Sarah will be her help for a period of time. And then Sarah will be disappearing and an assistant treasurer will be coming into play. And then... When you have the assistant, you'll probably only need one clerk. That's kind right, of a scenario right. you're looking at. Right. 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 Okay. Okay. I see three clerks there. So there's there's two clerks. Clerk yeah, it's between. Yeah, it's not not times two. It's uh, yeah. clerk two. Yeah. 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 So, so what you're asking is what salary to send. For July right. 1st, so when she becomes the treasurer. Right. And I and I was proposing, yes. right. And I was proposing for her middle of the range recommended by the Collins Center. And for the assistant treasurer collector, I recommend the top of the range simply because we just tried to hire for that position and it was excruciatingly difficult <laughs> the amount of money we were offering. And it ended up taking, you know, three months. Right. And I can't tell you how important it is. <laughs> Because I believe we got in so much trouble because it was two different positions. It was treasurer and then tax collector. And the process and the procedures were just non-existent. You know, money on the floor, under the door. I mean, that wasn't her fault, but... Um, no, but that was a whole different environment. Yeah. Right, right, right. Well, that's the thing. Right. One know, person in an office with no one else around doing right. well, that's four what jobs. Saying. But you still don't want that to happen. And it can. Yeah, it's a very, it's an extremely important position. Um, so I'm going to, I would go with your recommendation of the 160, which includes two clerks, but the two clerks will be assistant treasurer collector and one clerk. Just to be younger. Right. So, so what I, what I'm proposing here is again budgeting for a fully staffed up office where we have two clerks, one assistant treasurer collector, and a, a treasurer collector, and some level of support from a consultant. What actually ends up happening next year may, you know, be three positions instead of that, or 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 less even, just depending on what makes most sense for the office. Um, but what I'm trying to budget for is if we, you know, if we really need to have all of that support. Um, but again, you know, it's, it's just my recommendation. If you feel like, for example, if you feel like we can certainly, we can cut one of these clerks um, or bring that treasurer, assistant treasurer collector salary down a little bit, um, you know, that's, that's something we can look at. But you're also bringing in a new computer system. Is that well, sure? so we're, we're we're looking at our options right now in terms of yeah finances. Now again, that's something that I would hope um, if we put out an RFP, Sarah would respond and be good with helping train on that mm -hmm. because you know she has team members who have worked with every almost every imaginable municipal finance software system. And she she would be a um, an outside consultant that you right. bill as. So in other words, say something came up that the treasurer collector needs help with, like a project or some such thing, I don't know. And uh, she would go to Sarah and say, I need help with your this project. And then she yeah. would, Sarah would bill for that specific amount of time. So it's kind of hard to budget that, but. Well, we just, you know, we'll, we have would the have. the money there in place. Yeah, we're, we're. <laughs> We'd have to work it out with Sarah, and I'm going to have a conversation with our new assistant treasurer collector this afternoon about shaping that scope of work for the consultant. So I know exactly, you know, where are the areas you need support in, 
and then we can see, okay, what are we expecting in terms of hours there? And so. the postal proposal is going out in March. Well, in in April, yeah, in April. In April now, yeah. Well, I'm trying to I'm trying to get them out shortly, but yeah, it's okay. yeah. And what again is your? So uh, let me give you a total in terms of salaries because you're not not including any anything that we would be paying a you know a consultant. So in terms of salaries total, I'm I'm proposing about a hundred thousand dollars. Now that includes an assistant treasurer, a treasurer collector, an assistant treasurer collector, and two clerks. Now 160. I thought you said 160. Sorry, that is the overall appropriation for the entire department. So that, yeah, that includes expenses, tax, title, legal fees, all that other stuff. Yep. Yep. But again, what are you proposing for each employee? Yes. So for for the treasurer collector, I would be pr proposing middle of the range on the Collins Center, which is 38,000. Mm -hmm. For the assistant treasurer collector, I would be proposing top of the range, which is $24,700. And then for each of the clerks, I would again be recommending top of the range, uh, $17,784. So here's the top of the range. Yeah. Uh, let's see if I've got the. So I think I went with. Let's see. This is the moderate number. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, what I think it is, is I have two different hours plugged in here. So on here, I have 15 hours and on here on my spreadsheet, I have 18. So let me, this is, I think this is because this is one of the positions I asked Sarah to please send me what are their average hours because they vary a little bit. Yeah, you got 15 now. Yeah. 18 hours more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't have a problem with that as long as the goal is to get rid of the consultant and just have right. a, have somebody as an on call. But if you're going to keep right. paying her sixty thousand and have all these people, right, right, yeah, you know, yeah. So I think, and, and there'll be a transition. I'm sure there'll be a little overlap in yep. there once everyone's going. Oh my god. <laughs> so I think the other way we can kind of approach this is, you know, because right now I have a placeholder of just twenty thousand for a kind of on call consultant. I don't actually know, you know, what number Sarah would come back with. Um, you know, it certainly can't be ninety thousand, <laughs> but but you know, it may be more than twenty thousand. And if that's the case, then we can look at saying, okay, well, then we're only going to be doing this one clerk. Um, obviously, we'll negotiate a bit with Sarah, but then also we'll look at those positions and where they are they are in the range, their hours, and if some of them we can do without. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you think the mid range for the treasurer, top of the range for the assistants? Yes. And you just hired someone and they went yeah, for 30, and she was the only person that applied, right? She wasn't the only person, but it was a struggle to get three. Um, and, and one of them. I think was just using us to leverage an offer from their current employers. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm on board. Right. Um, and this is all going to be plugged into your spreadsheet, right? Yeah, yeah. So the spreadsheet I sent you this week has oh, on that, it has my recommendations. Okay. But do you want? Are you saying you want like my detailed notes on? No, no, no. All no. The... <laughs> like when you went over the treasurer collector assistant and the two clerks. Yep. That's on there now. Right? Yes. Okay. Correct. Yep. Yeah, I mean that sounds reasonable. There'll be a little overlap as the transition happens. I mean, obviously, the goal is to get our people doing it and then have someone, if you have a problem and you can't get something weird come up, you can just call somebody. Right, exactly. Right. 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 And I think and some of that support would come from the vendor. 
when you're bringing in a new um, system. Well, if it's a programming question, yeah, but if it's a yeah, I right. They, I mean, the other the, the other things, yeah. right? The other things I was kind of envisioning that a consultant would help out with is like major borrowings. Um, if there's working with our the financial advisors that needs to be done, you know, it, she may be entirely capable of that. But I, you know, having somebody there who's well, yeah, a yeah, little so more support, yeah. yeah. Um, and then you know, there's yeah. the monthly yeah. reconciliation stuff. So. I mean, the thing you don't want to do is inflate salaries to the point where when you do have to go out and get help, you're stuck. Right. You don't want to hire someone to do this and find out they can only do this. Sure. Yeah. And we're paying them forty thousand, and they're only capable of providing thirty thousand of support. Mm -hmm. But if she's making twenty nine, and the salary for the treasurer is thirty eight for the other responsibility, I don't think that's a big change in pay. And the payroll service and Sarah now do all the reporting, like for the state? Uh, yeah, I think they do, yeah. Okay. So she'll be doing that here. Right. Okay. Right. Well, so this is another, this is going to be part of the conversation is do we want, is that something that a Sarah should do or should we try to move that back in house as well? Right, right. Because, because <laughs> right. I don't know, they, true, but the payroll service they didn't do the reporting when I was here, but may, they may do it now. In other words, the quarterly, you have to you have to report to the state your payroll every quarter. Yeah. So I'm assuming maybe they're doing it now. They are, yeah. They probably, yeah. They may have been doing. They weren't. Yeah. No, they weren't when I was here for years. How long ago were you here, Jay? Ten years ago. Okay. So yeah, I think it's been ten years. Right. Well, not quite that year. 2015, 16, 17, 18. So, do we agree on that or no? Yes. Okay. So, what else we got? All right. So, we did uh, all the treasurer, oh, fire department salary. So, this is going to be, this is an interesting one. Um, so, a uh, quick update. So previously, you know, when we, when Chief Motter let us know he was going to be departing, we had reached out to Chester about, you know, maybe collaborating and having a joint fire chief. Uh, back in December, they were not ready for that. Um, and now they've kind of come back around and saying, oh, actually, maybe we would be. <laughs> so, so uh, I'm trying to set up a, a joint meeting with their select board and sure. our select board. Um, currently, I'll tell you that we're, pretty far apart in terms of compensation uh, in that they do not compensate chief at all. Um, he, Richie refused a salary every year he's been there. Um, and so they don't have, they have to create a, an appropriation for that position um, because it's really, for the most part, it's getting harder and harder to actually find people who will be a chief as a volunteer. Um, and of course we currently budget um, almost $23,000 for that position. Um, so this is a, obviously it's a lot of moving pieces here, right? Because we're working with another town potentially and we don't exactly know what the right level of hours for that is and, you know, you know the per hour. So we have a recommendation from the Collins Center um, in terms of at least the, the uh, wage per hour. Um, I just wanna make sure I got it on here. Because currently, yeah, they're at 26. So the minimum is 25, right? 25 or 25, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll pay it 23. Right. Right. And you recommend? Well, so <laughs> it, it, I mean, it's hard to make a recommendation here because, again, we're working with another town and I'm not but sure exactly not, where they're potentially working with another town. Sure, yes. Um, yeah. But in that design, will he be a full-time employee no, there, no. there or still be well so so this is this is a tricky thing, out. right? Because so the way that Chief Motter, when he suggested we do this, envisioned it was um, Leverett and Wendell have a similar situation. They share a fire chief, but it's the guy is hired separately by each town. And so for each town, he's working under that 19 hours a week but cumulatively he has almost a full-time position, but he just didn't need health insurance or anything. He, you know, he's all set on that stuff. And a lot of these fire chiefs are. Um, so that's potentially the arrangement we could mm -hmm. have with Chester is, hey, you know, we're each hiring yeah. the guy, but 
you know, functionally he he's yeah. getting the salary. That, that would be the it would be great if we can if we can do it. Um, yeah. Now I'll say our interim fire chief Adam Dolby has always said, you know, we should be looking for even more towns and make this a truly regional fire chief position, and that would entail benefits, et cetera, and actually, you know. But that's like a five-year plan. That's that's yeah, that's down yeah. the road. This is a so, starter. Yeah. So I think that is cool. I like that where they split it out. Yeah. Yes. So what's your recommendation? So my recommendation uh, was to go with the bottom of the the range because we're currently we're below the range entirely, <laughs> and check based on the fact that Chester, um, they don't have any appropriation for their chief now. And when I asked them, well, what do you think you would be paying? And they came in quite low as well. <laughs> um, oh yes, significantly. They were thinking, you know, something like 7,000 a year. Um, well, that's the whole thing. I don't know my if, opinion, is if we're going to try to combine with Chester and pay half here and half there, I wouldn't even change the number. Why would you change it to 26? Well, because, and I don't know if this is a conflict of interest, I, my husband's a volunteer fireman. And I know the calls they get now. I know they don't get a lot of burning buildings, but they get a lot of calls. And they really have a lot of volunteers who are great, and they've been there for a long time, but they need a leader. They need a leader. And if the, the fire chief is not here or whatever, it makes it difficult for people who have been with the, you know, the fire department for a long time because they end up being the leader. <laughs> and... It just, they really need a leader, I a, think. A guy like the yeah. fellow that we have, who was a retired fire chief, yeah, he was probably making 160 to 180 at East Hampton. I mean, he was right. retired and got 80% of that. So whether we pay him 22 or 25 is not a life or death decision for that man. No, I don't know. That, yeah. I'm not saying <laughs> the, the, the reason, so the reason I went with going you know, increasing it slightly to be within that comp center range is we did try to hire a fire chief by ourselves and we got nothing <laughs> because, and what we kept hearing was that's just not enough money for, <laughs> for the pain in the ass that being a fire chief is, which some days it is <laughs> probably unbelievable. So um, now the other thing I would say is what I saw with chief Motter was really great was he knew how to go after grants. And that's a huge benefit to the town. If we're not paying for new, uh, you know, breathing apparatus or something like that, because he's found a grant, that's great. Um, so, so I'd love to get somebody who could do something like that. But. So, like I said, when we went out for um, request for proposal on the new fire chief, we got nothing. And it was down to like 22. Yeah, yeah right. it's, it's around so there. Yeah. 26 is not, it's still in the calling center. It's the low end of the range. Right. But I think that maybe it's definitely important that we consider that. And I think with the stuff going on with Chester, we can't really wait for that. Well, this is <laughs> our other committee members here. <laughs> so, um, huh? The smart one, Kate. Yeah, I would think. <laughs> um, yeah, it's true. We, we you know, we, we may have to. Now. Yes, well, so we have an interim fire chief right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Adam knows what he's doing, but he's, he's also, he's got a full-time job and he's, you know, so that's, that's a reality. Um, so anyway, so my recommendation is just bottom of the range from Collins Center that may shift sig significantly if we have conversations with Chester and, mm -hmm. you know, there, it sounds like there's a candidate out there who wants to do it for a lot less. Um, <laughs> well, that's, <No>. you know, <laughs> so we had, we have one guy who is, who is expressed interest. Um, you know, the challenge I've seen with him is he he's away pretty much every weekend in the warmer months of the year because he's a professional bass fisherman <laughs> um which might which you know it might be fine maybe that's the reality for these positions now it's just it's just a little tough to say and then you know as long as you have some kind of deputy person who can yeah. be ready on the weekends um but also I'm, i i just 
there are a lot of question marks for me because theoretically, if he was as solid as he makes himself out to be, he would be the fire chief right now in Chester, and he's not. So I'm just I'm hesitant. He's from, he's from Chester. Uh, I'm not. I'm can't recall if he's from there or actually if he lives here. So, but he he works. For so he's a local. He's a local. Yes. Yep. <laughs> and he might be great. I don't. I don't know. I'm just. Uh, to me, there's been some question marks. So. Well, again, though, we can't. Well, the days are. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I think, yeah, I mean, well, that's true. That's true. Um, so anyway, that's my recommendation. But if you have other thoughts, uh, yeah, again, that's that's one where, you know, we're gonna have conversations with Chester, and this could change a lot mm -hmm. in a short period of time. I'm agreeing with him and Right, me too. Yes, knowing that it may change down the line. Road, but Treasurer Clutcher, you know, um, are we discussing the selectman secretary fellow? We'll see, Kathy. Or Kathy. Did you? Fire Chief? Yeah. No, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. It's kind of all up in the air. I mean, it's. Right. So that's it. Right. But I think you minimum know. is a good starting place, at least. Yeah, for budgeting purposes. For for select board uh, administrative assistant, I recommended just Collin Center, middle of the range. Um, Which is twenty one. And who is that? Is That's that Joanne. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And how many hours does she work? A billion. <laughs> she works usually nineteen hours a week. And what was her proposed salary for next year? Uh, well, she didn't. She didn't make a request. Um, so, you know, I'm happy to talk to her about what her request is. She's already. I will say so. She's already within the Collins Center range at this point. So this is um, what she makes now. Yes. Yeah. 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 So if she got even in one quarter. Yeah. She'd be at twenty thousand. 20,282. Right. So it's, we're not dealing with a huge difference here, right. one way or another. Right. And besides the fact that, again, I think this is a catch up position because a, a long, a few, let's say five years ago, it was substantially lower. Yeah. And it just didn't. I think it's because it really was kind of two positions. Well, no, I remember there used to be somebody working up here as a select board salary. It was Kara, as a matter of fact, um, the select board secretary, right. and she worked for the water department. Right. So, so that's a nine and a half percent raise to go to the middle. Just think. Right. So it's less than two thousand a year. Right. But so I'm uh, I'm I'm I mean, very it's not a big deal. You know yeah. more than more yeah. than I do or what she does. Yeah, she does a lot. <laughs> um, and, and she seems to. Every time I walk in here, she right because you're working oh. with her. Yeah. Um, the only thing I'm wondering is the 19 hours is that like two days a week. Each like ten hours a day. She, she's here. She's here. Day. She's here Mondays from ten until whenever the select board meeting ends. Right. So, right. Oh, that's a long. Story. Yeah. Well, hey, I'm here at, at nine till whenever the select board <laughs> meeting ends. So, um, but then and then she's here Tuesdays, um, and then also Thursdays to process the warrants. So, um. We did bring a larger raise last year, right? We did, and and, to, yeah. and part of that was that she had been doing a lot of the stuff that I'm doing for, um, you know, several months while there was no town administrator, mm -hmm. full time town administrator here. So somebody had to pick up the slack. Um, and I will say, you know, now that like I've been here a year, I've I've taken a lot of that stuff off her plate, um, so that that could be a consideration in this as well. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I don't. To me, it's like. Two and a quarter versus the middle of the Collins Center range. It's not a mm -hmm. massive difference. Right, right. So I'm agreeable to that. Middle of the range. Agreed. That's fine. 
And the water department. The water department. Oh dear, the water department. Oh, it's kind of funny. They're their own little thing with all their own little money, and we decide what they make. Well, well somebody's sort of. Got a, you know? Somebody's <laughs> got a problem with you being reasonable or not. Well, I know. But I mean, basically, it's like their own little business. Right, it is, and that's the same with the broadband. Unless there is a different types of enterprise account, I'm sure there must be. I don't know. No, they're they're both enterprise funds. That right. I mean, water and obviously is, the same. Yeah, right? water is obviously a lot older, and broadband is you know we're just right. getting to the point where they right. have something that looks like the water budget. Right. Um. So I I you know I put this on here. Um. I with the water department budget to me it's like okay are you guys doing things within your current rate structure um and you know if if not or if in future years it's you require a rate increase given you know normal cost escalation you know then there's some we give them some input mm -hmm. but for the most part you know i, I i'm a little bit more hands off with them yeah. um so um I mean, they're all they're all in a reasonable range, right? So, except the water department superintendent couldn't pay too much because the average salary is twenty eight thousand. Yeah, looking at the market average there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I will say, you know, it's a little bit of a special situation there. Um, in that, you know, Gordon has some health problems, and so he he also brings in this guy Kevin Shea as a consultant and pays him out of that line item to help out because you know Gordon has to go to treatments, et cetera, sometimes. Um, so he pays them out of what line items? It, that that superintendent salary, salary, yeah. Instead of paying himself. Okay. Yeah. He's all right with that. That's that's what Gordon proposed <laughs> um, because he was like, you know, I'm going to have to be. Well, he couldn't couldn't yeah, do it. Right. right. Couldn't do his job. So no, right. I know that, yeah. but I mean, he's all right with um, moving forward that way. Yeah, for the time being, that's what that's what he yeah. came up with. So yeah, there wasn't too much um, that that was exciting in these ones. Um, yeah. I will say so with the the operator again. We're working with Chester on kind of making that into a joint position, um, and the way that's shaking out. And I guess it'll be oh, man tonight. We got to deal with it. <laughs> um, Long day. <laughs> yeah. Um, basically, I don't know if you guys have met Steve. Our he, he does our our he's our water labor, not operator, um, and he's going to be. The idea would be he was split time between here and Chester. Um, and that would allow him to um, basically get the number of hours required to reach the next licensing stage sooner than he otherwise could. So we're hoping he'll be able to basically take a faster ladder up into the operator position. Um, and currently we have a primary and secondary operator who have, um, in my mind, long outstayed their welcome. But uh, since the water department doesn't want to take any action on that, um, we'll just have to work on finding you know, a replacement. So. So that's, uh, yeah, so that's what I had in terms of thoughts on salaries and wages. Again, I'm still waiting on some stuff from Sarah. So I'll send that over once I get that. Um, you know, most of that, I don't think it's gonna be too dramatic a change. And it's just about how much kind of um, squish we want, you know, say in the transfer station salaries, you know, are we, you know, in case they have a big snowstorm and have to work additional hours, that kind of thing. Um, how did they work additional hours in a snowstorm? So they they end up, I think, plowing that uh, and oh, shoveling sorry, that that space. Yeah. Well, get it ready for two days later. <laughs> they can't do it. I'm not. I'm not sure it's a even a plow thing. I think it might just be a shoveling thing. But I. I they, have, it's road. Road. they have a snowblower. Well, the town yeah. plow, plows the road. Right. right. But they have because a snowblower that they, they clean up library, around. The, and they didn't yeah. do the fire department the other day. Yes, this was a this was a conversation. <laughs> this was a conversation. Yeah, this was a conversation with Dave because, um, and I and I you know I feel bad for him in that you know, there were trees down on virtually every town owned road, and so that was, that was a struggle. But you're right. We we had to talk like, hey, here here's some 
departments, town departments that are really need to be a priority because they're emergency services. Um, so yeah, that's that's an ongoing conversation for sure. They had a hard time on our roof. They plowed in from one way and they got just past our driveway and the snow just piled up in front of the truck and there were trees in it and everything. So I went out with my tractor and I moved all the trees and I called them up and said that I'd moved the stuff and they could come back with the tree lanes. He goes, oh, great, we'll be right over. And he sent the truck down, the F-350 with the big V thing. And you could, he came and tried to plow and you could see the dent in the snow bank where the plow was or where the four tires, that was it, done. Didn't have a chance, they had to bring the road grader up. But he was so excited, oh, that's great, I'll be right over. And he, <laughs> my yeah. truck will go right through it. Yeah, that was some that was some <laughs> wild snow. That was yeah, <laughs> that for sure. Yeah. I went around my whole neighborhood with my tractor and moved tree limbs out of the road. People there were limbs right, right in front of people's right. houses, right? Yeah. Blocking half right. the road, and they don't even walk down there and pull them out of the road. Right. Right in front of their house. One guy has a track and he left the limb right in the road. So I went around the whole neighborhood. Took me an hour, an hour and I just pushed everything out of the road. And you had fun. I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to see if there's a, some money for a stipend in the highway budget. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's uh, those were my recommendations in terms of salaries, et cetera. Well, anyways, what did we decide about the water department? I think it was... As is. Is. Everything as is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then some other things that I mentioned in my email. So we had our meeting with the Hilltown Community Ambulance Association the other night. Um, they were proposing, and I think I had, you know, already explained this, but they pretty significant increase um, just in terms of the base assessment that they have for us. So it was going from 33, or not even 33, 30,000 to over 40,000. Um, and then on top of that, there is that non-public trust fund assessment. Um, I'll tell you, there are a lot of different opinions about that organization and what the town should do. Um, and I'm kind of waiting to hear a little bit from other communities, so Russell, Montgomery, et cetera. Um, well, no, when they yeah. sat down with the select board, I wasn't there. What was the reaction or any reaction? Well, um, you know, it was it was a muted reaction on our part in that, you know, um, we don't necessarily have uh, another option, right? Well, Not that's immediately. What I'm yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, Westfield. What's your well, option? Well, that's that's yeah. right. There are there are there are those kinds of options. Um, now I don't know. If, I don't know if Westfield is like champing at the bit to to no, take us on as well. Um, but well, I, I, they may not be chomping at the bit. But would they do it? What would they charge? And is that bill to people's insurance instead of the panel? Right. That's, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, that'd be something I'd look into. Yeah, yeah. Again, there are a lot of different yeah. opinions and a lot of different options out there. Well, there aren't a lot of options, unfortunately, but there are some right. different configurations, right? Um, I'm, I'm certainly, um, I'm frustrated with Hilltown in that I don't think they ever give us nearly enough data on what they're doing and you know how much they're paying all their employees and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then, you know, we have this issue, you know, for example, with our firefighter who got, you know, they transported him after a car fire and he had inhaled a lot of smoke and, and, you know, and we got a bill for it. And then, you know, eventually it ended up going to collections because I, I gather that, you know, the fire chief at the time thought he shouldn't have to pay it. Um, and so we ended up in a situation where, you know, they're, they're going after us for money. And I'm like, we already pay you guys $30,000 a year. Can you pick up the phone and call us and we'll like figure this out instead of, oh, it's going to collections. And mm. now so it's- What's the 34? The 30,000? Just- Just for providing service within the just town. for being ready. Just for then providing service. Call, you pay more? Well, so this is, yeah, this is a question, right? Like, hey, we already pay you $30,000 right. a year. So why do we have to pay you anything else? Um, so yeah, that's it. Now, to me, it's like part of it is, you know, we're subsidizing a service 
for our residents, mm -hmm. right? Because our residents actually pay relatively low rates for that. Um, and we're also making sure that they can exist <laughs> because if all the towns said, no, nah, we're not paying you that, that assessment, they would, they would be done. So, so we pay how much a year? 30,000 right 30, now. 000. And then what they're by 500 households. Yeah. They used to submit a rather lengthy document about where they spent their money, but I guess they kind of. Was John Garrity here? Was he? Oh, no, he wasn't at the meeting. No, no, it was um, Bailey, their new uh, executive director, their board members, so Mary Ann Pease from Chester and um, wow, what's his name from Worthington? Can't, can't think of his name at the moment. Um, and then their new CFO, this woman, Jade Rice, was there as well. Um, you know, I mean, it's, uh, it's um, yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up in Westfield and lived up here for 23 years. And some of the things that the Hill Towns do, everybody wants to have their own little Keep them, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like when they did this school thing, Blanford and Worthington held the district hostage and said, We don't have our own schools, we're voting this down. So they had all these little elementary yeah. schools all over. And now Blanford has City Hall to maintain, and Russell has a big school building. Yeah. And they do that with the fire department and all these ambulance, everything. Everyone wants their own little and they don't they don't work together. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a real struggle just to get people yeah. to understand we're all too small to not regionalize. We're just yeah. it's, you know. I mean Russell. Yeah. You fall to walk out the door and trip you land in Russell. <laughs> yeah. But, but yet they're sort of the spirit to regionalize. I mean they're they're serving Okay. Okay. Right, and but I the payment isn't well. So they have an assessment per capita assessment for each town. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, so what they were proposing, I think, was uh, roughly a thirty-five dollar per capita. Um, and so, because we only have twelve hundred, you know, our mm -hmm. our increase was a lot less than say, you know, Huntington. Um, but yeah, um, the other thing is, you know, they are talking about, you know, what they can do in the long term. Um, they pointed out that just being a nonprofit in general is not a great situation, especially given these new assessments that the state is handing down. Um, so in their, their kind of thinking is we would love to become one of these municipalities. And it's, you know, they're the host community and other communities, you know, pay into that or something like that. And I can see advantages and disadvantages there, but that's one thing they're thinking. Um, and they are thinking a little bit about um, how they can um, kind of take away from Westfield the calls on the pike, because currently Westfield gets all the calls on the pike. And that really- They got that exit right there and they got an ambulance 300 feet from the- Right, from the right, right. Yeah. Maybe they're cutting into our revenue. Well, yes, but like Kevin's pointing out, I mean, it's Westfield kind of is the logical uh, ambulance service to handle that. So they got a firehouse just past the thing around the right hand side. Right yeah. There. Okay. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I will say, like, another thing that was frustrating is, you know, Kara brought up a very simple question Do you guys have some kind of capital plan? Because, you know, you're telling us about aging ambulances, you're telling us about a facility that's really not up to standard, so what's the plan? And it was kind of like, well, yeah, we don't have a crystal ball, <laughs> which is, we're paying you guys $30,000 a year, you got to have a better answer right. than that. That's right. like, so I, so that to me is like, okay, is Westfield uh, interested? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. that, when I hear that kind of response, it's like, Absolutely. yeah, so. I mean, it'd be a conversation to yeah. Huntington. So they're on right there, at Bromley Road, like right before Gateway. You'll see like you know, a little. Huntington Country Store is. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right there. Yep. There's a just before the Country Store on the left is Bromley Road. Oh, that goes off. Okay. Turn okay. left. Right, right there. Right. Oh, okay. So they got like I think there's bushes, big hedges around. Yeah. yeah. No, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that'd be a conversation to have with Westfield. Doesn't hurt to talk. Yeah, I think. You know? I mean, the other thing we always run into, and this is with the school system too, is do we wanna be the ones pulling our support 
when we're also we try to be the ones who are always encouraging regionalization and collaboration and working together. So it's it's, it's always tricky, you know. Um, like the case of the mayor of Alabaster, a good friend of mine, called my phone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's definitely something to think about. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's like the fiber. Don't hurt that. That's how we got the fiber out of it. Mm. Right, Westfield Gas and Electric, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like there's one other thing I wanted to mention to you. Oh, um, what was it? Not insurance. My, what's that? Voke Ed. Voke Ed, yes. Um, so um, we got the number of applicants at least to our vocational schools mm -hmm. from um from gateway and then we also got the rates for non-resident students um, from the department of elementary and secondary education so we now have a rough sense of what that should be and it's, it's an increase um and it the exact number will depend on there's one student who's not sure if they're going to um you know smith folk or to westfield academy um, so it was a sig significant increase. So it was, I think, going from under 200,000 for this year up to 250. Yeah. Um, now, ultimately, you know, student might not accept or something, you know, we, we'll, we, we'll, we'll see, but we'll, we should be prepared to budget 250,000 for, um, cause that's, that would cover. I think it's now 12 students, and then you always want to have a little bit extra in case there's special ed, because those are like per hour costs, essentially, that get tacked on at the end of the year. So, yeah. So that was, that's something that's out there. Um, I'm waiting to hear back from our insurer. So, uh, Maya, um, they, they, <laughs> they're really informal about it, which I always feel like insurers are really, it's just, weirdly informal oh 20 000, 60 000, yeah whatever that seems about right you know but that just tells you the sums of money they're dealing with um they they were saying a two and a quarter increase from where we're at currently which is pretty reasonable um so the exact number we'd budget for that depends on some credits that were owed so they're going to send me the package basically next week and we'll mm -hmm. take a look at that and i'll have a little bit more of a solid number to plug in here um so yeah, that's uh, you know those were the changes on my end. Um, any other thoughts, questions? Yeah, I have a question with the emails you had sent. Yes. Um, oh, the capital budget. Right? That, yeah. 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 <laughs> please. Two hundred and sixty dollars facility placeholder for fire. Um, yep. Highway. I'm confused by the whole process. I thought the town shut it down by saying. No money. There was a special town meeting vote that can be voted again. Um, and that's that's why I put a placeholder in there. Just putting it out there in case we vote again to do it. Right. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And why did we miss out on those grants? Uh, so I don't know the exact that? specifics because I wasn't here. I believe okay. those are basically two things where um probably josh was heading them up and then when he left okay. people didn't even realize that they were out there and so i think that's what happened again i wasn't here so. yes <laughs> but um it's yeah that's it's a lot of money what's that <laughs> yeah that, yeah yeah you can string me up if you need somebody to yeah but but yeah so i i, I think that's what happened but i can't be sure because yeah, no, it makes sense, and I was hoping that was it. Our, <laughs> our accountant, so so I worked for the last like year getting in touch with um, yeah. what is it, Elder Affairs, who does the SIG, what's called the SIG grant service incentive, mm -hmm. and um, we said, you know, what's the deal? I thought we could get the seventeen thousand dollars, and they said it's just the stuff was not submitted on time, and we can't at this point. So, unfortunately. I think at this point, our accountants are like, just handle it out of free cash and stop allowing it to be deducted from your free cash every year. Cause that's just not a good idea. <laughs> so, so yeah, so those are those. And those are, I know those are, that's not fun to no, talk no, about no, a town no. meeting. So 
So to me, it's a great advertisement for the value of my job. <laughs> you know, as soon as the guy in my position walked away, oh, you left. <laughs> anyway, uh, March last year. So a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. Time flies. That's Time nice. flies. Uh, <laughs> any other questions on the capital that's, budget stuff? That's, that's where the, there. yeah, yeah. So basically, I think you had said that you could finalize the proposal spreadsheet at the meeting with Sarah. Yeah, I'm, again, I'm waiting on Sarah, um, our insurer, to get us that exact number. Um, and then obviously, you know, I think what I'd like to do is have basically your, you know, our shared recommendation for the end of this month. Um, and then in May, um, we could, I mean, we could do this a couple ways, right? So there's the mini town meeting, which is May 22nd. And that's really when we're going over the entire warrant for town meeting um, and kind of finalizing that budget then. Um, so it might be a good idea to have one, at least one joint meeting with the select board and the finance committee prior to then so we can identify if there are any areas where there are there's some distance or gaps. Um, at the end of May? Well, at, um, I think this would be earlier and I'm talking about a joint meeting. Time, town meeting at the end of May. No, no the, the, the 22nd is the, is the mini town meeting mm -hmm. as it's called, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, town. Yeah, it's a mini, <laughs> we call it mini town meeting. It's not a town, because it's not a town meeting at all, actually. <laughs> it's, it's just in this room with, um, so yeah, so um, I would think you know a week prior or two weeks prior, we should have a joint meeting with the select board mm -hmm. and go everything, go over everything and iron anything out. So two weeks prior. Yeah. Can we just like do rock rock date? <laughs> yeah. Well, so whatever that Monday, um, whatever that Monday is. Let's see. Hold on. That's going to be a problem, I guess. Playing golf will be on Monday night. Oh, okay. Um, that's, that's okay. You know what? Why don't we do this? Because I already have a meeting on thir I, Thursday the 4th. Um, I'm wondering, would, would you be open to... I can't do that. You can't do Thursday the 4th. Okay. All right. I mean, I can come, but I'd just be late. I'd be here 6.30-ish, quarter so. Um, okay, well, that's that's not too bad because we'll have other business to attend to before we get into the budget anyway. Mm -hmm. So, just have that. So, we're talking yeah. about May 4th. Well, no, so you're talking, are, are you talking about May 4th or Monday? Monday, Monday. Okay. Monday. So, let's let's plan on Monday, May 1st, um, joint meeting with the select board. Mm -hmm. Um, beyond the budget, we will also want to do year end transfers because those require approval by the select board and the finance committee. And I will get you a list of those prior to May 1st. And that's if six is Yes, person. correct. Yep. Yeah. And uh, and I can find out who we're playing that night because it's two man team because we can find out who we're playing and um, ask them to be as early as they can. Yeah. Did you want to we'll see? figure out we'll figure out ways to stall for you kevin don't <laughs> worry <laughs> don't drive too fast <laughs> they, have their, they have their regular meeting anyway right? correct and yeah they have they have they have so um that's the joint meeting with the select board um did you want us to meet before that or no yeah, so this is a question for the committee. Do we want to have one more meeting before April is out and go over those additional items? Or <laughs> Janet's shaking her head. So yeah, uh, I, I, you're going to do another one of these. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going to be all updated. Yeah. Right. So so why don't you do that and get that? Right. Sure. Right. And, and then we'll decide. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then we can look at it and we can see the different categories and, and everything. Right. And then, because a lot of these things went down. Sure, yep. And some of them went up and, right. and that way we could see the final results at the end. We could each look at it individually. We don't have a problem. You see, if it balances. We already discussed everything. <laughs> yeah. If it balances, we're doing good. Yeah. 
So it balances. No balance. No, no, that's great. That's great. So I will. Yeah. I, I'll send you guys the updated spreadsheet. Um, I'll make some tweaks to that kind of letter I had provided that has the narrative, just so it has the the updated numbers in it. Um, and then yeah, we'll we'll schedule that meeting with the select board and be good to go. Yeah. So if people have questions, we could yep. just get a hold of you and say. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. Right. Great. Okay. That sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you. Do you have anything else on the agenda? I don't have an agenda in front of me. Um, let's see. <laughs> well, we did the um, transfers, right? right? Yep. Yeah, we did everything. Yep. Yeah. Right. And I know I still owe you meeting minutes for March 6th. I just haven't had a minute for those, so. Oh, so they they created job descriptions for basically all of the positions oh, we have. Do? Yeah, and actually, you are reminding me of something I did want to quickly <laughs> discuss. <laughs> um, conservation agent. Uh, so Dick Gates had brought this up. Um, you know, I said, well, let's. I think the committee had said, yeah, we could maybe do ten thousand dollars for something like that. Um, we got, uh, you know, this funding through PVPC to do look at a joint position with another town. Uh, I had one meeting with them and actually initially it looked like it was going to be an amazing fit in that they needed somebody 14 hours a week. We only needed somebody like five hours a week, magically below 19 hours a week. <laughs> and, you know, we, you know, they, we, you get to hire somebody for a more attractive position than five hours a week. Um, Unfortunately, they said, actually, now we're looking for 25 hours a week. <laughs> and so it, so it kind of was like, I think, it, I don't think we want this to be a benefited position at this point. So we're just waiting into it. So I talked to our conservation chair um, and we reached out to DEP and they pointed out there's, it, there's a couple of folks out there who actually might have some capacity to do like five hours a week. So what I'm suggesting is we put out um, a job posting for five hours um, we've got two or three people we think might be interested. And then ultimately, I think we'd only end up having to budget like seven or eight thousand dollars for that position. Yeah. Um, and we'll see, you know, in future years, maybe it changes a little bit, but that's at least they that's get the, yeah, the support <laughs> they need. It is yeah. an on call thing, so, right? Well, so we, yeah, we'd have to figure out exactly how it's structured. Probably right. a lot of what Dick needs them to do is just paperwork, you know, filings on, you know, wetlands violations and all that kind of fun stuff. So they don't have to be in Blanford for that necessarily. Mm -hmm. But then there's other work about monitoring certain sites that they would have to, of course, be here. So there was a woman who came into the bank all the time, Heather Coney, CEO. Oh, that sounds familiar. And she lives in Chester. Uh -huh. and, and that's what she does. She works out of her house. And she does environmental stuff for construction and contractors and all that. She's very nice. Um, her husband's family owns Colby Concrete in Agua. Oh, okay, that's, maybe that's why I'm like, yeah. that name yeah. sounds really familiar. They live on River Road in Chester oh. up past Dayville. And I don't... Oh yeah, Heather Comey, wetland consultant. You see her? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but she might be somebody that and you can mention my name. I know her very well. You can mention my name. And, um, yeah, that's that's great to know. Yeah. Yeah. She was relatively young and energetic mm -hmm. and a bright person that would be somebody that would be good to work with. Great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and Dick had identified, so there's a, a young guy out of Westfield State who is in Beckett and Southampton now. Um, and he said he was he was very impressed with them. And also, the great thing is he's got a year of experience with these municipalities at this yeah. point. Um, but he's he's another potential person. And then there's I think a third who DEP mentioned who yeah. is up in there. So there's some options. For somebody else. Uh -huh. And then the person just retired, so she just took over all the. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Over, yeah. yeah. Good to know. Um, else to to. Yeah. Great. All right. Anything else? So we'll we'll convene again on May first. We'll you know buy Kevin some time while <laughs> he's coming up from his yeah. golf game. And... <laughs> okay, I'll talk to Mike. We're gonna start I think the week before, uh -huh. so I can find out who the other team is, and I'll just tell them to be there 
four o'clock and we'll be done by quarter six six o'clock great yeah. okay yeah. um an interesting thing that i noticed actually two things uh -huh. my daughter not pertaining to business at all yeah. here but my daughter writes the innovation newsletter on online for the boston business journal and a lot of those 